So welcome to Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today is February 20th, and I'm broadcasting from Los Angeles live. So for those of you who are with me for the first time and connecting with me to the Academy, as I mentioned, we're going to do a meditation first and during the meditation there's going to be a transmission that happens and um, those of you who are, are with me live from on Instagram or Facebook um, I have a hard time I can't answer your questions because there's too many devices so uh, if you want to be a part of the Academy and be a part of questioning and answering then you would need to connect with us through our system from the academy um, as it's difficult for me to 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 be communicating with three other devices um, so anyway but you're welcome to be with us so the first thing we're going to do is the most important thing in our lives more than anything else is to be silent and quiet and to dive into our, our hearts. And, uh, and inner peace, inner silence is the most valuable thing. It's the very gem that we receive in our lives. It's beyond anything else because nothing else compares as far as the value to inner silence, inner peace. If you don't have inner peace, then your life is very poor. It doesn't matter how, how many other objects you have. You maybe you're health, you're blessed with being healthy. You have a beautiful family. You have money, you have possessions. You found your love of life but inside you're in turmoil, inside you have anxiety, your mind is either in the future or, you, or in the past. You are regretting the things, the decisions you've made in your past and you're worried about what's gonna happen in the future. So now you, your quality of life is very poor, yet you may have everything in the world. But inside, you live, you're empty. Inside, you're not happy because your mind is going crazy. So inner peace goes beyond. It's the most valuable thing to have. If you do have, you come to inner peace, inner silence. You come to unity with yourself. Then... The world outside really does not matter whether you're getting what you want or not because you already got it here. So this one is the most important part. This is the treasure here. This is what we want. We want to be quiet inside and to be one with ourselves. And to do that, meditation is a way to come to discover it's the pathway to discover our inner inner peace inner freedom so we use different kind of meditations but it's been my discovery that different kind of meditations for different people works but the most uh, effective type of meditation is the active meditations. Active meditations, they're very effective and they, they have a very quick way of silencing the mind and bringing us to our hearts. And when you're transitioning, transitioning from the head to the heart and you move from the head to the heart, the heart opens up and the love flows. And that love begins with you because we reach in self-love to love and accept ourselves. That's the most important thing 
that we can do in this life to come to peace with ourselves. It means that you have to feel the love which is here. And if you feel the love which is here, then you're home. Everything else could be solved. Everything else in life could be dealt with. Everything else in life becomes easy because you have discovered love inside yourself. And you're no longer seeking it outside of yourself. It's here and you feel it and you sit with it and love will heal everything. It sounds very easy, doesn't it? Well, it sounds very easy because it is easy. And I'll walk you through that path. But in this process, we need to unclutch and decondition, get out of our old conditioning from the old paradigm. So that part of it, it may, be, it may seem a little bit difficult and we need a guide to help us to come to this, to switch directions and to go inside. And so right now this is all blah, 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 blah. But let's really experience it on our own. And I encourage you to do these practices on your own on ba daily basis until you really find a path, the pathway home, the pathway to inner silence. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a grounding meditation. And we're going to get grounded. We're going to get connected to the planet, planet Earth. So let's stand up, all of us. Come to this. And those of you who've been with me before, you know how this works. So we're going to connect our root chakra to the planet Earth. So you're going to imagine that you have grown roots from your sacrum and from your legs. Your roots go all the way inside the planet. So you can just kind of go up and down. You are like this big, thick, old tree that has these roots that goes into the planet. And you can just go up and down a little bit and feel it. So now for one moment, close your eyes and imagine your roots going deep inside the planet Earth. So now you breathe in, as you breathe in, you're pulling the energy in, the energy comes inside you. It comes in a form of spiraling, spirals. You're pulling in the green light, green energy of planet Earth. And you pull it in, and then you and you're breathing it out and it goes out. So you can, use, you can use your hands to make it simple for yourself. You're breathing in and you breathe it out. And again, you're breathing it in and you're breathing it out. And you can see Green light, the prana, the healing energy of the planet is entering into your body through your roots. You're sucking it in and you breathing it out. And in the form of spiral, it's going through you, connecting all of your chakras to each other, turning everything on, removing any blockages may be inside you and connecting you to the, from your crown chakra, you get connected to the universe. So breathe in and breathe out. And you may kind of bend 
up and down. So breathe in and breathe out. Again, breathing in and breathing out. And then again, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And now as you're doing this, you're getting a little bit more comfortable with it. I want you to go up and down. You're breathing in and breathing out. Okay. You get in the rhythm of it. Breathing in and breathing out. Right. And now I want you to go up and down and start. You don't need to use your hands anymore. You have your eyes closed. Your attention is on your seeing pulling in the prana from the planet through your roots coming inside your body. As this green light coming inside your body, you don't even have a body anymore. You just become light. And you're going up and down and you're making noises. You create this, gener you're a generator. You're generating, you're pulling in. You're, it's like a pump, like a generator. It's sucking in the planet energy inside itself and it's sending it out through the root, through the crown chakra. So we start making the noise. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> going up and down keep going <laughs> Make the noise and do the movement. Go through the movement. Oh, <laughs> 
Keep moving, keep moving, and keep generate, generate. Keep moving up and down and keep generating and pull in the energy of the planet Earth into your body and just recycle it. And in your imagination, see that this green light is spiraling to your body. It's going through you. Keep going up and down. Keep going up and down. Take a deep breath. Stay in your center, keep your attention on one point. And now you have generated the green light, the prana from the planet Earth is just spiraling through your body, spiraling to your chakras and it's going through. So you can just relax and keep your attention on one point. Bring your attention on your third eye or bring your attention on your heart. And I would like you to put your hands on your chest area, your heart area. And just feel the energy, feel the presence, feel this energy that you have generated, you have created, and you have connected to this life force, which is here. And Feel it with your hands as you have your hands getting close to your heart. And I would like you to repeat after me. I want you to just feel this energy, to be proud of yourself for being here today. And I would like you to love to put your ideas of yourself away, whatever idea you have, put your ideas away in this moment. And I want you to unconditionally love yourself in this moment. Love yourself without any stories in this moment. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. 
I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Take a deep breath and just relax and just see how you feel in this moment. Allow the energy to do its thing. Feel the presence of this energy. Feel the presence which is here. And one more time, repeat after me. And really mean it because th this is a moment that you can transform everything within yourself and your life by simply putting your self-judgment away and loving yourself and allowing the love, the divine love, to flow through your heart and to create transformation because transformation happens through self-love. It's love that wins at the end. It's love that transforms our lives. And that starts with you loving yourself and accepting yourself and not judging yourself. This is how it begins. And this is how it ends, love. So in this very moment, with your idea of who you are or what you are away and your judgments, bring your attention here to the center of yourself and love yourself without any stories. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Come back now to your chair and sit there and Stay in your meditation. Come back in your center and just stay in this place. And you don't have to try not to think or think. You're simply in your center and you're spending time with yourself. You're hanging out with yourself.
You're spending time with yourself. You're here. And through being quiet, you're feeling the presence. There is an energy field that is revealing itself to you. That's the life force. If you're present, if you're quiet, you can feel this energy field in front, around you, surrounding you right now. You can even touch it with your hands if you wish so. It's the very presence which is here. The very presence feeling the presence, the living spirit in this very moment by becoming quiet, by being available. Suddenly, you become aware of your soul. You become, become aware of the living spirit which is breathing through you. It's thinking through you. It speaks through you right now in this moment. You feel calmer, more relaxed, and you can feel the love which is here. Because love is always here. Love is not something that you have to gain because anything you have to gain you you can also lose the true love is always here and the true love comes from your own heart you're the source of it okay mark my words you are the source of the true love. Pay attention. You are the source of the true love. True love comes from yourself. But it does require someone to stop the madness of running around to pause, stop, and pay attention within ourselves. And then you discover the true love. You discover the real thing. That, that which we're all always looking all of our lives, and we've been told through our schooling and our education that Love comes from somebody else and somewhere else. So it's objectified. It's an object. 
So we're looking for it in the other world. If I meet the right woman, if I meet the right man, then I get love. Then I'm in love. But it's not out there. Yes, you can meet the right partner. You feel the love. But then when, when you're projecting it on a partner and the partner leaves you, then you go through misery because you're projecting that that love left with the partner. Therefore, you suffer. Until we learn that the true love neither comes with anybody nor can be taken away by anyone. It's really here. It's in a recognition, realizing its presence here in our hearts. But these are words and meaningless if we don't feel it. It's another story. It's another thing you read in a book. Reading a story in a book. Until you begin to feel it. Once you start to feel it, then you know you can never lose it. Because it's always here. True love is always here. Isn't that wonderful? Recognizing that true love, the love that you've been looking for all your life, is always here inside yourself. What a treasure, what a relief to come to this understanding. So if it's always here within ourselves, then Zarathustra, how can I feel it all the time? By meditation is one way. By many, many, there's so many different ways. Since it's here and it's always available, then what happens is through our lives, we tap into it. We feel it. There's moments that it expresses itself. And then we think it disappeared because we think it comes from somewhere else. So we're not really looking for the source of it. We're objectifying it. We're looking for it someplace else. So I think I went to a nice holiday. I went to somewhere with beautiful nature and I start feeling the love. And I think because I went to Canary Islands, I went to Bahamas, I went to Sedona, I went to Hawaii and that's why I feel this love. I feel this bliss. But it's really not because I went to Canary Islands. The islands, the nature, this beautiful place is a mirror. It's reflecting back. I have a mirror in my face. I'm looking at a mirror. The nature, this beautiful nature, is reflecting back what's here. It's showing to me that the beauty I find in the nature, the love, this, the peace that I'm experiencing is being reflected. It's really, I'm ex experiencing myself. But I'm used to projecting it I'm used to projecting beauty, love, peace outside of myself. So I think I went to somewhere beautiful, a beautiful nature place, natural place of beauty. And that's why I feel the love. 
So when I leave that place and I go back to Los Angeles, I go back to Stockholm, I go back to Copenhagen, I go back to Toronto, I go back somewhere, then I lose it. So I think I have to move to Canary Islands. I have to move to Hawaii to feel this. Because I'm thinking it's a place, it's an object. Similarly, similarly, same thing happens. I meet a partner, I meet a beautiful woman that I like. Okay, or you or somebody, you know, you're a woman, you meet a man, or you're a woman, you meet a woman, whatever is your preference, it doesn't matter. You find somebody that you feel very attracted to and you get closer to them and you start to love feeling this love and you're thinking that it's the person that you fell in love with this person is has brought love to you and that's a mistake we make because we've been we've been brainwashed from childhood in our programming we've been programmed from very early age that love is an object we're thinking it's coming from the outside because when you were a child early age what happened When you do something good, your mom, your dad puts you on their lap saying, oh, good boy, good girl, you're such a good girl, you're, you're doing everything right. Daddy loves you, mommy loves you, because you did something positive. It's an action. You ate your vitamins, you went to bed on time. You're quiet, you're obedient. You eat your spaghetti and now mommy loves you. Daddy loves you. You're rewarded for your positive action. You're rewarded because you have cooperated with your parents. And because of that, you're rewarded affection, love, positivity. And then when you do something parents don't like, you to do you're punished for it you may get slapped you may get scold because you didn't do what they wanted you to do so now for your wrongdoing you get punished you don't get love and you don't get acceptance so this goes in our psyche that I have to do something in order to get love and acceptance. Then as you start growing up, you go to school, school does the same thing. A good student is being applauded by school, by the teachers. You get good grades. If you're good at sports and, and you're a winner, you become the captain of the team, Ultimately, how many movies you have seen that there is a football player, there is an athlete, basketball, tennis, whatever, and they win. They, their football team wins. And the captain who scored the final goal and they won, what do they get? They get the trophy girl. The most beautiful girl in the high school goes out with the captain of the team who won. So he gets the trophy girl or she gets the trophy boy. Means he, she is rewarded by their good action, by their success. And the movie is telling us that if you're a winner, you're going to get the girl you like, the boy you like, and you're well deserved to get it. So an object, you get an object. You're rewarded with the object. 
So now we're starting to think that I have to do these things that my school likes in order to be liked, to be rewarded. So being liked and being rewarded is coming from the outside world. I have to do something for it to get it. So slowly, slowly, I begin to learn how to be a businessman and how to prostitute myself too. So I have to do something good for mommy, daddy to love me. I have to do something good for school to love me. So I'm just prostituting myself. I'm willing and dealing. This is business. I'm becoming a businessman, a businesswoman. Then you go higher, you go to the army and you're serving the country and you're doing everything right and you go to war. And the more of the enemy people you kill, the more your country is going to be proud of you and you get a medal, you get a car, you come back from war, soldiers come back from war and they've been successful. What do they do? What do they get? They get the trophy girls. So they're rewarded for their good action. They're plotted. So they get acceptance of the nation. They get the acceptance from the church. Same thing in religious wars. You've been a good Catholic, you've been a good Muslim, you've been a good Jew, you've been a good Buddhist, and you go out there and you kill other people in the name of religion, and you come back and you're rewarded. You're accepted. You get love and acceptance. You see this. Am I being clear? Am I conveying this correctly? Can you see that? What is going on? How we get brainwashed. And then watch these movies or listen to these songs, love songs, love movies. Typical story. A rich girl, a poor guy. A rich guy, a poor girl. They're from two different classes. They're in love with each other, but the family is opposing this. And they're going through hardship. And finally they have moments together, but then the girl is taken away or the guy is taken away. And then the other partner crashes and becomes miserable because he lost his love or she lost her love. They're projecting love on another person. Or so many movies, films we have seen, or so many times we lived our lives. You connect with someone, you're deeply in love with someone, you are with this person for a number of time, years. You're with them for six months, for five years. And then after a period of time, this person is tired of you and wants to go with somebody else. Or they find someone younger or someone more interesting than you. And they leave you for somebody else. And what happens to you? You crash. You become miserable. You're heartbroken because you lost your love. You lost love because he, she left you. Because you're projecting this love you're experiencing is coming from somebody else. You've been trained, brainwashed from childhood to project love coming from an outside it's an object. So you got the object of your desire, you're totally in love, and the object leaves you. It leaves you for somebody else. And then what happens to you? You're miserable. How many times people committed suicide because, they, because somebody who they love left them? or they become alcoholics, drug addicts, they lost their home, they lost their money, they lost everything. 
is because we're projecting love is coming from outside of ourselves. Until, through the grace of God, or through the grace of the Guru, or through the grace of existence, which is all of it the same, the message starts to come into us. And we begin to realize that the true love neither comes nor goes. The true love is not coming from the other world. It's here. It's within, within me. It's within you. And it cannot be taken away from you. You begin to bring your attention from focusing on the outside. You start to turn it inward and you begin to look within yourself. And you start to get glimpses of it. It bubbles up. It starts to come. There are moments like you're, <laughs> you start laughing. You start feeling it. Because you're starting to noticing it within yourself. You're unclutching from the old paradigm. And you're retooling. And you're bringing your attention. You're noticing the presence. You're noticing the real love. You're noticing that Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the Supreme Soul, God, the One Soul, the Big Kahuna, the True Love, the Creator of Existence, the Creator of us, that which created me and created you and created this universe is here. It's operating from you. It's not separated. It's not somewhere up in the sky that you have to look for it. It's not in the Bible. It's not in Tibet. It is there. But it's also in you. So you begin to wake up from this sleep, half sleep, half illusion. You begin to wake up and start to notice it. And the more you notice it here, the less you suffer. The more you pay attention, to it's here and start to feel it because you're paying attention to it. The less you suffer, suffering starts to go away. And we're all here on this academy because one way or the other, we suffer. And we're seeking, we're looking for the answer. Because you have so many other things to do. That you would be doing other things rather than sitting here listening to me. You can go to the gym, you can go for a walk, you could be cooking, you can watch a movie, a video, you can be going out with your boyfriend, girlfriend, a million different things. But you're not doing that. You're here. Because you're looking. You're seeking. What are you seeking? You're seeking love. You're seeking peace. Why? Because you're tired of suffering. You don't want to suffer anymore. You don't want to be up, down, up, down, like the stock market. So you're looking for the answer. Yes, I have curi we have curiosity about higher consciousness. We have curiosity about 
ancient civilizations. We have curiosity about where was I before I was born? Where would I go after I die? Metaphysics, spirituality. We have curiosity about those things. Yes. But the very first and the most powerful aspect, what's really driving us to this teaching is because we're tired of suffering. We're looking for something. We're looking for peace. We're looking for love, true love. Everything else is around, but it's not the main drive. The very, very main drive is this sense of loneliness, sense of loss, sense that nobody understands me. I'm alone in this world. Nobody really gets what I feel. And I feel these things. But it all roots, goes back to one thing. At the very root is love. Recognizing the presence, recognizing love, the presence, the spirit, God, the love that you feel here in this moment when you are by yourself, no matter where you are, in the middle of downtown LA, in the middle of the chaos, or you're in the middle of the desert or a beautiful island, and you're here, regardless if you have your beloved boyfriend, girlfriend, your wife, husband, or not, your children, regardless, you're by yourself, no matter where you are, and you feel the presence of God, the presence of love here, and you're drinking it, and you're blissed out. You're in bliss because you know you're not alone and you're complete. And this love you feel is never going to leave you because we're sick of being left out. We don't want to be left out anymore. And if you don't want to be left out, then don't project on objects, because objects come and go. Bring your attention on that which never comes and never goes. That which is always here. And what is that is always here? Your beautiful self. is always here. And your beautiful self is complete and it's not needy, it's whole, it's complete, it's complete. And it's very easy to access it when you have the right training. When somebody that you trust is sending you in that direction, that you feel connected to the teachings, the literature, talks, whatever that is, whatever that happens, through any mouth, anyone, anything that comes, this message. But once you start to look, you start to see it. Because you can't see it if you're looking out there. 
it's full of disappointments because you get it and you lose it you get it you lose it because it's not there it's here Any questions? Anybody has any questions? Raise your hand or send me a message on the chat box. No question. Oh yeah, hi Reza, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi Reza. Hi Zara Sistrom. If nobody has any questions, I do. Uh, last week, uh, one of the brothers asked you uh, about the ayahuasca and okay. you said uh, go with your intuition and what your heart says also uh, in your book you said that always follow your heart do what your heart tells you so i agree that uh, the best uh, guidance and direction comes from intuition uh, however, we need to make sure that we can differentiate between the in true intuition, which probably comes from subconscious, uh, true self, or heart, or whatever, and the thoughts that at cellular level. So, can you please uh, elaborate a little bit on this? How can you make sure that the so called uh, intuition is really coming out of the our heart or your heart and not just it's our right. feeling and emotions right okay that's a very good question thank you well let me ask you something what brings you to this academy um you just mentioned a little bit of, uh, uh, before although that i have been curious about where did i come from where i'm going from now about the unknowns about the metaphysics and you can see all these books behind me which is a half of the books that i've read so right. these are just a part of curiosity but right. really the foundation of that as you said is love right and right i'm just looking for that right. uh, someone that is missing within me yes okay but yes i understand that part of it you're looking for finding that piece that is missing yeah. but you can go to any place else to get information but what brings you to me what brings you to this platform i first of all i believe that not only me all of us here is just because of the blessing of uh, universe universe really brought me here and crossed me with your path right right but something feels good to to join in uh-huh right yes because we've been together for a few months that's right and uh it's always nice to see you and you've been with me every week and we actually look forward to seeing each other yes and but something feels good correct mm -hmm. right so you come you're drawn to this academy to this platform there's thousands of other teachers right that and a lot of them their message is beautiful they're wonderful teachers but somehow something feels right to be here together correct okay right that is your intuition i have no problem with that and I do not have the slightest doubt about it. I am 100% sure by heart that my intuition brought me here. Right. However, my question is about when something outside, for example, that brother says that, what do you think about the ayahuasca? And right. when I look at them, I did actually some uh, research about the ayahuasca. Okay, hold on a second. So let's just stick to this something feels really really right at this moment i'm just talking about this moment i don't know next week how you're going to feel right but so far something feels right 
to be here. It's not your, your mind may come and say, well, there is something I want to learn from him or da, 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 or maybe I get something from him or maybe da, da. something really draws you in this direction. Mm -hmm. Right? And that thing is not drawing you to somewhere else today. You may, you may check out another teacher tomorrow or whatever, but in this hour, something's drawing you to this direction. Yes? Yes. Yeah. And that's the intuition. Now, maybe your wife, your children, someone comes and says, Reza, there is this thing going on, that thing going on, let's do this, let's do that. And you say, no, I don't care what is going on. Right now, I need to be here. So your intuitive knowing is pulling you in this direction. It doesn't matter your logical mind may tell you something else but something feels really good and that's what i'm referring to in answer to answering your question regarding ayahuasca and what i answered is it's not for me to tell anybody whether they should do an ayahuasca journey or not that, that's true right yeah. it's for them to look inside their heart and that is with anything in life it's for them to, to look into their hearts to see if it's right for them or not. To really see if they're drawn to doing something. And that's a general thing in life or they're not drawn in that direction. And to see how strong it is. If it's really strong and pulling you that you need to go to Peru or Brazil and do it, that's your thing. If it's really pulling you strongly to go do it and if it's not pulling you strongly to go do it then it's not for you and trusting that when it's strong it will take you whichever direction now i'm not talking about just that okay but in general anything anything in life how strongly it's pulling me uh, for example, it happens for me and all of a sudden I start getting this feeling that I need to call a friend. Let's say I need to connect with Hilda, Hilda Evanstad. And I need to, you know, I need to contact Hilda. I need to contact Hilda. I need to contact Hilda. It just keeps coming up for me. One day, two days, three days. And finally I'm like, okay, I've learned that, okay, I need to contact my friend. And when I do contact my friend, my friend says, oh my God, you called in exact time and I've been thinking about you and I really need to talk to you. I'm so glad you contacted me. Because it's not a mindy thing. It's just a strong feeling that is pulling you very strongly and going in that direction. And that's the difference between the mind and the heart. Now, there are times that intellectually, logically, I'm supposed to be calling somebody. I'm supposed to be nice to somebody. I'm supposed to be diplomatic about something. Or someone offers me a business partnership. Someone offers me to go do a workshop in somewhere. Somebody has offered me to go to Denmark or to go to Germany or somewhere. And it looks really good on paper. But I can't get myself into picking up the phone and calling him or sending him an email. I just don't feel it. Everything looks good, but I don't feel it. And everybody may say to me, Zaratustra, are you, are you mad? Why aren't you doing this? This is such a great offer. And I just say, I don't feel it. And I don't do it. Because my intuition is telling me no, when my logical mind tells me I should be doing it. So the more we tune in, the more we become quiet, because this thing needs to quiet down. Or if you can't quiet it down, 
then you need to go beyond the thinking mind, going behind the mind. But, I mean, these are ways of explaining it. Or going from the head to the heart. The more we learn to bypass the thinking, logical, intellectual mind, the more we reside in our hearts. And the more your intuition gets stronger because your intuition is your heart, it's connected to your heart, and you start listening to the language of the heart. And the language of the heart is very different than the language of the mind. And there is a fine balance, it's very subtle, but it's something we used when we were children and we did things intuitively. And slowly, slowly, as we became conditioned and the society started to school us and condition us, we started to deviate from the language of the heart and we went to the mind and trying to think of things logically or in, you know, being intellectual about it analyzing a lot of different things. I'm not saying it's not a good thing to do, not to be thoughtful, mindful of things. But I'm just saying that we got deviated. Or we have this powerful GPS here. When the more you get tuned into it, the more it reveals itself. And it's always right. But yes, it's very, very difficult to explain this to somebody who hasn't been touched by it, someone who's very much in their mind. It's very difficult to explain this. It's almost impossible. Because they want to understand this with their thinking mind. You cannot understand this with your thinking mind because the thinking mind is in a different place. You get it with your heart. And what you can do, we use, I just unmuted you, we're using simple examples. What draws me to do this? The same thing for me. What draws me to do the academy relentlessly every Tuesday or almost every Tuesday? And I... Regardless how I feel, I show up. Something feels good about it. Something feels right about it. I have to do it. I just can't not do it. I miss it if I don't do it. And sometimes I don't feel like doing it. Sometimes I'm sick, I'm ill, I'm tired, I didn't sleep the night before. I don't know what to talk about. I don't feel like I look presentable. It happens but something very strongly pulls me to do it. Sometimes I complain to Shishi, I don't want to do academy. Ah, and Shishi says, sorry to destroy, you always love it when you do it. And then I come and sit down and I set up myself and brrr, everything comes. But there is something greater than me that is pulling me to do it and it feels right. We pay attention to that. Something feels right to do. It simply feels right. Okay, I give you an example. I was in a coffee shop the other day. I gave, I bought something. I gave someone $10 for a coffee I had and they gave me $18 back. <laughs> so they thought it was a 20. Okay. And, you know, I didn't notice it. And, you know, I do my thing. And then I'm, I leave the coffee shop. You know, I put my hand in my pocket. I take my wallet out. And then I'll realize I, they gave me $10 more. And I'm just walking. The mind says, oh, don't worry about it. You know, you spend so much money there. And I'm just walking. And it's like, no. 
It just doesn't feel right. You know? And no one's there to catch me. No one's there to grade me. It just didn't feel, it was like, I go there every day and I look into these people's eyes every day and they're smiling at me. It just doesn't feel right. I can't do this. So I turn around and go back and I give him the change. It's just, I didn't do it because I should be a good citizen. I didn't do it because I should be spiritual because I don't care about those things. I just turned around and did it because it didn't feel right. You understand? Yeah. Not because I'm a spiritual teacher and I have to do everything right. Right, right. Not because morally it's not correct. Not because of those things. Just because it didn't feel right for me. And that's it. So I followed my intuition. And that happens in our lives all the time. Every moment in your life, it's happening. And if you notice the difference, then, then, then you tune in more and more with your intuition. Yes, I understood what you said and 100% I agree with that because it has happened to me that many times I've made a decision and I knew that it's 100% coming out of my true intuition. And I was 100% sure about that. However, I cannot deny that uh, sometimes I had made decision that uh, later on I realized those just, they were a result of my emotions. So that too happens. That's right. That too happens. You know? Just because you're following your intuition on doing something in life, I mean, maybe later on the results are not the way we want it to be. But also the same way, if you're using your analytical mind, the res results down the line could be something else. That's, that's life. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Always is a pleasure, Reza. So, anything else? Anyone else? No questions? Nothing? Okay, there is something here. Okay, sorry. There was a question. I didn't see it. But let me see. Memento, thank you so much for your love. And session today really has been fast for me all right thank you so much for your love and the session today it really has been transforming for me it is as if you custom created it just for me i know it is for everyone of course i wish you had a reply of this so i could listen to it over and over a few times my deepest gratitude for your energy and wisdom i was feeling so stuck with something in my life i was able to break through it with your help today thank you again blessings well thank you i appreciate it my dear friend i don't know if you want me to um reveal your name or not but thank you i read your message um so just for your for knowing is that this uh academy is being recorded and it will be Put on my Facebook page and it will be on my YouTube YouTube page and if you have signed up with us through zoom then we we'll also email you a copy of it so you can watch this again
So I have a few events coming. Um, for those of you who live in California in LA area, uh, I'm having a uh, transformational shamanic group healing event this coming Thursday, uh, February 22nd. It's going to be from 7 to 10 p.m. Um, here in Los Angeles at a place called uh, Gateway. And that's the address is 2205 South Barrington. Right? 2305 South Barrington. And um, we have it. Uh, the information is on my website, zartustra.tv. Uh, the first weekend of March, I'm offering my healing training program, level one and two, fifth dimensional quantum healing training program, level one and two, here in Los Angeles. That some of you, Reza, you're coming. And uh, so this would be the only time I'm offering the healing training program in Los Angeles due to my schedule. After that, I will be heading to Sweden and Poland. <laughs> which I'm looking forward to that too. Um, by the end of this week, hopefully, inshallah, we're going to be putting out the information for my upcoming retreat in Sweden, which is going to be in Ore. So uh, we're making some changes to the healing training program in Ore. It's, where I'm going to be offering all four levels uh, and, and the retreat is going to be from July 2nd to July 12th. And we're adding more yoga classes and we're, the retreat, we're going to focus on healthy eating and yoga and more dances added to this retreat. And, um, we're going to be putting things up and we only have room for 30 people. Those of you who've been with me. So the maximum capacity is about 34. So four people are our staff and we only have space for 30. Maybe we can squeeze 31. So anyway, if you would like to take advantage of the early bird, um, as you know, the first, uh, 20 people can sign up and get the early bird prize. So it's going to be again, July 2nd to July 12th. You can do level one and two, or you can do level three and four, or you can do all of it. So for 10 days, we're going to be together in beautiful Ore in Northern Sweden. So, uh, just wanted to let you know I'm going to be putting it out. Hopefully by the end of this this week, we'll we'll be we'll have it on our website. Uh, our next academy is going to be next weekend. I don't have any next week. Oh yeah, next Tuesday is uh, Shishi. What's next Tuesday date? Is it twenty eight? Twenty seven. So and our yeah the next next academy. Next Tuesday, the 27th. Thank you for joining me. If there is no more questions, we still have like four, four minutes left. Who? Oh yeah, I, I'm going to be at Harmony Expo uh, in Stockholm, in Solna. Um, actually, I'm going to Sweden on the 25th of March, and uh, I'm offering level one and two of fifth dimensional quantum healing in a place called Motala, and I think it's about two and a half hours away from Stockholm. Um, and we're offering a deep discount because it's going to be right on the Easter holiday. So we decided... For those of you who are not so much into doing Easter and would like to do the healing training program, um, 
the one that I'm doing in Scandinavia is going to be right on the Easter in a place called Motala. You're welcome to come again. Come to my website, zaratustra.tv, and the healing training program is going to be from, it's from March 29th, right? Starting? Yeah, it starts March, to, yeah, I think it's from March 29th to April 3rd, I believe. Yeah. And then after that, I do offer, there's going to be a free event. It's a talk. I think it's going to be on April 5th. I don't have my schedule in front of me. April 5th, I have that in Stockholm that it's open to everyone. And then April 7 and April 8 is the Harmony Mesa. Or for those of you who don't know what Mesa is, it's the Expo. So yes, I will be at Harmony Mesa. And I have a series of different events in Sweden. But uh, the best is if you go on my website and check them out. All right, my beautiful friends. Sending you lots of love. God bless you all. Stay in your heart. Stay in this place. Because this is home. And by staying in this place, you overcome all the obstacles in your life. By simply staying in your heart. Because this is where your power is. This is your power source. The heart. And the more you, you bring your attention to this place, the more you become powerful, the more you become majestic, the more you emanating pure love and light to your surrounding because you're in your heart. Your attention is here. Your attention is on love. And this love transforms anything that you touch anything no matter how dark how negative that thing is or that person you come across you are here in in your own heart and that opens the way and that's becomes like a torch like a light and clears your path because your attention is here you're feeling the love within yourself. And if it's hard to do that, then you do some active meditations. You do some meditation and it open, your heart opens up and you begin to feel it. And it reminds you again that it's here. And this overcomes all your fears and anxieties because where there is love, your own self-love there is no room for fear fear disappears immediately the moment you start to feel the love that is here no matter how dark is the situation light is being put into it and it's it illuminates the darkness immediately it's just like you're turning a torch you're turning a flashlight in a dark bedroom. The moment you turn it on, the dark is gone. And the same thing here. It's exactly the same thing in our lives. We'll go into the fear, anxiety, stress, doubts, all the time. It happens to all of us that we get frightened, that we don't know how something is going to, to come together. What is the outcome? When we get stuck in our heads, when you come back here, you start to feel the heart, your heart, the love, which is here. You quiet down and you come back here. And then it's like, yes. And all those doubts disappear because this one knows the path, the way, 
this one leads you in the right direction and you can trust it. But since, as I mentioned earlier, we've been conditioned to look for it outside, it takes a little bit of time and practice and guidance to unclutch from the old paradigm and to reprogram yourself by bringing and discovering this. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not difficult. But then again, what do you have to lose? Okay, nice seeing you all. God bless you and look forward to seeing you next week. Namaste.